Hello everybody, Kane here and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. In this one, we're gonna talk about equipment. So there are a few equipments that are actually incredibly powerful that quite a few people might not be using. So um, as I'm making videos about hero guides, it's going to take quite a while for me to really cover all of the heroes so let's just talk about a few equipments that might directly affect your field right now so the first equipment is on avril which is the dauntless staff outgoing damage against large units is increased by an additional 10 percent so what does this mean large units are heroes and in the current pvp Pretty much you kill heroes, you remove a ton of huge buffs from the enemy, or even um, some core artifacts, buffs, debuffs, etc. And the army of the enemy can fall rather quickly. It really depends on a few circumstances here and there, but essentially killing heroes is usually how PvP really goes. Now, again, depends who you fight, when you fight, sometimes the frontline just disappears instantly but not always depending who you fight so aside from that we have a couple of others on avalon so as you can see my avalon build is rather quite different than from majority of the people and why so so first thing is uh i am not human i am lich and i still use avalon so the uh, I suppose the weapon the sword is tectonic great axe now people would be asking why are you using a tank item on a buffer the reason for that is because that buffer is a prism carrier you don't want this buffer to die instantly you want this buffer to survive and if he survives this prism will affect your entire field so you build that stuff as tanky as you can so for example clash of fate said will deny um, a huge proc of damage if it lands on any of your army that being heroes as well i do believe it can be dragon as well it can be any army as well so aside from that i have tectonic great axe damage mitigation 20 percent what is this this is physical and magical resistance 20 percent which is pretty friggin decent just for one equipment and then, of course, I have another item on Avalon, which is the Excalibur. Magic resistance, 30%. So just from these two items, I get 20% physical resistance and 50% magic resistance. Do you see the numbers? How much this one particular hero gets just from these items? It's crazy. And uh, I have this because the hero is not very high level. This kind of stops this hero from entering invincibility very, very early on. So with this particular item, in the first 10 seconds, my hero is getting 40% physical resistance and 70% magic resistance. I mean, of course, these resistances get reduced to a little bit lower uh, due to the caps or, or whatever, whatever, and still does help out quite a ton because in some cases, People are casting Avril and a ton of other stuff and Rufio's and Avalon just stands full HP for quite a while. So it does work in a sense, but it really depends. Can't really say it can work for everyone uh, as there are a ton of things, a ton of breakthroughs that might actually um, nullify this or might nullify this or just the damage that another person can dish out would be too high for it to be able to um, out tank it. However, this tanky build kind of sort of works. So aside from these two items, there are a couple of others as well. Uh, another one being the Heart of Darkness. So uh, I have a couple of them spread across my entire field. The reason for that is gain a 20% chance to disarm attackers for 4 seconds. Uh, can be triggered pretty quick, like in less than half a second. You want to have two of these in your front line, one on your burst side, one on your stall side. 
and maybe a couple in the back line. The reason for that is you usually have a Rufio jumping into the back line. Now, yes, Rufio is a gladiator and he will not be stunned or disarmed for the first 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, sometimes the Rufio doesn't really die. I mean, it depends if you're facing somebody around your power. Usually your mages or your necromancers are not going to kill him pretty easily. So this can kind of nullify his effect in your backline and even likely get him killed a lot earlier. So be aware that you might want to just put at least one of them in your backline somewhere that if a Rufio does land on it can actually help you remove majority of its effectiveness. Now again, you have to remember that you are building the formation so you decide where these particular items may go aside from that as you can see tectonic great axe again and then another one which is arcane armor magic resistance is increased by five percent when taking damage or magic damage rather lasting five seconds stacks up four times so what is better than resistances is even more resistances um, I do believe we have shown and even I have shown videos that resistances can go over a hundred or rather sorry to 100. Uh, now they fix that but it wasn't technically a hundred it was like 99.9 .9. so you still raise the resistances you're taking a lot less damage and that damage you don't need to heal or that damage didn't kill your particular hero. So it's really useful to have more of that, especially in the current sort of meta. Aside from that, as you can see, pretty much exact same build on Mira, magic resistance, magic resistance. This, I'm not sure I'm testing out, but essentially um, you might want to test out some crazy stuff yourself. But, like I said before, um, Flawless Excalibur pretty much on a lot of my buffers, a lot of my Prism holders, a lot of my backline users. Simply because magic resistance, a lot of the damage that the enemy, um, say Avril with Arcane 8 or Raxius or whichever other magic damage dealer would do damage, it would be resisted by a lot. This Trinket is probably one of the most powerful trinkets currently in the game. Um, now, to, uh, I suppose, talk about the stats, because people might be, well, but if you're going to put this item, another item is granting you like 37 uh, stats, and this one is 24. You would be stupid enough to lose on stats, and then you lose the fight. Majority of my fights... And what I face, I'm actually down on stats, like two or three stats, sometimes even four. And even those fights, you are able to win simply because your field is really properly managed. Not all of the enemy winning on stats have good items, have good trinkets, have good placement. So if you properly manage your field, your buffs, your equipment, your trinkets, your abilities, your other features your effects you don't really require to win on stats and you might even flawless them just across the other features so personally stats meant a lot before to me right now the stats don't really mean that much so that is why i kind of going um with uh, some specific builds on specific heroes which uh, i guess um would be a little bit better with some resistances now there are some heroes which i'm not using that stuff on i might test around a little bit and change some things to see whether or not it's better or worse now as you can see my research is not really that good uh in terms of hero levels i don't have rogues uh and mechanists over 70 because of research I don't have generals and sages over 70 because research as well. I only have gladiators and mages. So um, there is a nuance to that that um, regardless of what I do, rogues might actually just die to enemy archers or stuff like that. So 
do keep in mind that the Excalibur that I am placing on majority of the heroes does not defend against enemy archers because this is magic resistance and usually uh the enemy archers if they do land some hits on your buffer the buffer is likely to die like enemy human zen archers so be aware that this is sort of like a particular build to try and counter the enemy magic damage which I suppose at the very current moment is like majority of the damage that you're actually taking. I mean, it really depends what stage you're on, what you face, who you face. But in my opinion, magic resistance is pretty, pretty goddamn important. So aside from that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, covered a couple of items I suppose that people might find useful. Now... As I always say in terms of these videos, um, uh, where I give like the, I suppose, a huge variety of options for people to choose from, you are building your own formation. So if you're going to be planning on changing equipments, items, or whatever, be aware and take pictures of your own heroes prior to changing, right? Because, for example, at my own stage, I am facing um, a lot of, um, I suppose, Arcanate Avril users, which just Pam Avril, or Tissaphins, or Valeries, or whatever, whatever. Like, magic damage is pretty high. If you're a lot lower in Dual Tower or PvP, and of course, you have, like, Archers doing the most damage, or Human Archers, or whatever... You might not really benefit that much from magic resistance because the damage you're receiving is physical. So be aware that there are a ton of differences in here as well in terms of what stage you are at, uh, what breakthroughs you might have and all of those kinds of things. So to be safe, always take pictures before you change anything, test uh, stuff around, and if it works, it works. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always go back to your own build. It doesn't really cost anything. But these are the items that I use, and it is kind of working for me. Hopefully it does to you. And if it does, of course, do hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. As well as if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos, I have made a Patreon page where you would be able to do just that. In return, I would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events, PvP formations, and stuff like that. As well as I would like to thank all of my patrons for the support. I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.